Hello, are we there? So, hello to Buenos Aires and Porto. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, good morning to our colleagues, um, Bruno Pereira, Marco Conceição, Mario Azevedo and Nuno Pinto. Uh, we are very happy to greet them as the first panelists uh, uh, of the 10th session of the 13th International Symposium Music in Society, uh, discussing artistic research in music. Uh, what our colleagues will present is a project that actually originated in Sarajevo. Uh, so the title of the presentation is Sarajevo Experiment from the Performance that Acts to Listening that Migrates. You have the floor. Good morning to you all. I hope I'm sharing sound and you can have a listen to it. We're going to start by having a listen to some excerpts of our performance in last May in Sarajevo. Good morning. Well, uh, we designed for this conference an experimental essay between sound and writing, composed of reflective readings around a musical event, the magnetic content that became an exercise of thoughts within an artistic practice directed to an knowing making to musical performance and to the question felt in us of the loss of experience as musicians, being dedicated to the human body even more fragile is with the loss of experience, though here by us as a human strategy that operates dialectical and sensitive relations with the world. This is manifested in us by the excess of events placed at our disposal, by the obvious impossibility of isolating ourselves from the world, and above all, by the deliberate distancing from meaningful experience that which is permanently withdrawn and leave us as orphans. Um, here we rehearse an improvement of ideas, four pointers, about what constitutes us today as interpreters, creators, and receivers in contemporary time, starting from the Agambenian assumption that any discourse we can make about an artistic experience, this must happen based on the voice that tells us that the significant experience it is no longer possible for us because it is no longer something given. We all become Ulysses at the very moment when he decides well beyond the American register to leave again and return uh, soon after for the second time to Ithaca when, or even though he knows that this time Penelope may no longer wait for him. So what can we now know exposed about experience in Sarajevo last May? Here is the question that served us as a fuse for the experimental trial. Being interested in highlighting the artisanal uniqueness of our artistic work 
even waiting to expose the vital humors of our cool creative capacity and being on the lookout for the perf perfectic blessing of a lavish global culture of the same, being almost everything ready for the celebration, why did not happen with regard to so desired proportions? Why hasn't the ambitious event become a single and repeated moment? What frustrated the, the break taking experience of the scheduled event? These questions crossed us along our return to Porto and conjecture in us a resonant on which we will give account in the final part of this essay in sound musical recording. So we are therefore moving forwards with three lines of artistical achievement. First, the sound recording of the performance performed at the Sarajevo Cultural Center that you heard. Second, the manifest collection of our reflections, meanwhile fixed for future memory and for our condition as creators, interpreters, listeners. And finally, the resonant sound recording as an artistic epilogue uh, about what could have happened, but it did not happen. Thank you. Across it for Nuno, for Nuno. We start with the sound materiality of the audio recording of the musical event held in Sarajevo. We took it as a sound image of what happened to us artistically last May. When we were in our stay, and that we assume from now on as an anxious and disturbing object, reason sufficient and even necessary for what we propose to accomplish now. In the face of the record one that you heard, we imagined ourselves as Ulysses who returns to Ithaca, but in this occasion for the second time. It is that if in the first return, Ulysses brought with him an experience to tell, the second confronted him with the loss of the experience. We then began to link with Walter Benjamin just to confirm that this happened to us because we were not able to combine the materiality of the music with its signifiers and with its destiny or destinies or meanings in a time suitable for its maturation. When we heard this recording presented here as a fragmentary character, we realized a musical materiality has a place of enjoyment of complementarities between voice, clarinet and computer, which aspire to contribute to a better understanding of what we are in a group. Now, to make a fairer analysis of the exposed sound cluster, we then propose to refuse to use of adjectives, thinking alongside Roland Barthes, and at the same time, we try to avoid an aseptic analysis of the sound object, something, something that would only allow us to access to a linguistic system that would then come to be replaced by another system. Well beyond the melodic gesture of the clarinet, well beyond the sound atmospheric frame claimed by the sounds of the computer machine. We find a vocal materiality that hinted in a vocal psychotic delirium and in an action to counter plink, the possibility of escaping once for all the tyranny of meaning. Could we have made it? We will left with many doubts. We feel that the collective body of sounds failed to get its desired grain. Yet, uh, yet another allusion to Roland Barth, Barthes to keep us away from its immediate action. Therefore, perhaps it was not possible to escape to its de despotism because we were not able to be present in that living present. This is what reduced the materiality expected to a refuge accommodated from the usually delicacy of the instruments at stake. And perhaps that is not what allowed us to offer the participants more layers of sound per perception so that we can finally redistribute the so-called sound materiality balanced 
along with specific weight of its signifiers and therefore to mitigate the arrogance of meaning. We also waited for the possibility of addressing the auditory subjectivity of each of the participants creating an omnidirectional action, which eventually did not happen and that did not allow us to create the desired distance from the exposed sound objects. We are therefore short, but on alert. The metaphysical celebration of the sounds, a place where the real really gains a lot of strength and where the event in power would have happened. Acquiring sound, the manifesto collection. So we begin by asking ourselves, what does this mean as creators, interpreters and listeners? To live a time without experience. Does this loss deactivate the magical power of performance? Does listening diminishing its strength and give way to any de the limiting sedentary lifestyle? If it's true that the experience operates delicately relations with the world, will we have with its loss less world? What can we expect from our actions? Today we live in a time that is perpetuated in the present and which surrounds us to an empty place. We realize, we realize this expressed what remains in the difficulty we had and still have in finding synchronous moments of co-creation. This is one of our current weakness and that is added to the fragile of the poetic sound action that was designed for the Sarajevo last week in May. It is precisely at this moment we now dare to name with the second return to Ithaca, but playing all of us, this time the role of a wor uh, worried Ulysses. If on the first return Ulysses, at a time of his 20 years, brought to Ithaca the value of life experience, why did we have to imagine him hypothetically moving towards a second return? It was the second return that, in Benjamin's own saying, left us in the face of poverty of, of experience. And this is no longer a private thing, but the manifestation of a barbarism that plagues contemporaneity. Perhaps Sarajevo was a lucid failure, which, right now, forces us to announce a capacity for resistance and survival action. Now, if this last return to Ethica is a sign of, for us to occupy ourselves and equip ourselves with a tenacity that leads us to settle in the world, surviving barbarism, with no longer, it will no longer be evil. What can we then declare? Thus, we can announce that the idea that we now set in motion is that can be expressed by the tension created between traditional experience, Erfahrung, and live and live experience, Erlebnis, trying to touch the authenticity of contemporary musical uh, contemporary experiences. Therefore, we can say that the path we take towards living in tension with previous experience is a serious matter among us. We realize this even now, because we want to impose ourselves an ethos that can only lead us to another quality of sound musical experience, an experience that can consciously export the importance of presence of ethics in our work. Included, that is not, that is our particular pronouncement of what we mean when we talk about the concept of experience. We know that experience, in Benjamin's particular case, must be osculated as a sign, as an indication of what builds the knowledge that inhabits us. Therefore, we come to the desired question, anchored by Western musical tradition. From what sound image to come from ourselves can we expect? We live in the present moment, a crossing between a kind of transmitted musical experience and a kind of living musical experience, which we now try to transmit in an action located between the already felt and still non nonsense that has con that con constitutes sorry for us as a sound musical event. This promoter, gesture and transmitter of the tension between Erfarung and Libnis that takes place between us. So we reach the sound to be acquired from the exposed tension questions such as how to hear things that do not yet exist, 
or is it possible to hear your sounds? How to live in a place where the old forms of work, academic life, social behavior, art, music, no longer fits into what exists. In a world so full of signs, signifiers, materialities, and multiple interpretations dedicated to sounds, do we have the chance to orientate ourselves in this place of active contemplations that we call school? Is there or is not there a certain urgency to attribute meaning to what we see and hear, in particular, attention to the sounds that build up our reality? We know that music is a strong protagonist in this fast circulation of the symbolic, something that we are pleased to record, even when at the same time it worries us and unsettles us. For this resonant sound records, we think the sounds to carve as a possibility to make present in us what was absent, and thus make the experience something that would disturb its implicity poverty. We then place these sounds beside us, trying to embody them in an attitude of infinite hospitality. It is clear to us now that we continue to learn from them, them in order uh, to fight for an openness of meaning and for a greater understanding of the world that passes through us. We try not to focus on objects, but to focus on ourselves, on our condition as specialized manipulators of these sound objects, trying to better understand possible cohabitations that happen between the already heard and the not yet heard. We transformed ourselves into an experimental place, a place where we could transform our ears, our bodies, into a space-time able to recover in what we did lose. We are still doing this by projecting in the laboratory and in captures sound fragments that are the realization of an open model of creation, interpretation and observation, making us able to harbor historical awareness about what we do, situating all this between the permanent updating and its creative unfolding, either in the form of texts or in the form of audio recording. Thus, we leave right now for this meeting of reflection uh, a hand dedicated to the ethic of sounds that help us to observe contemporaneity that surrounds us and from the other side prepare to draw another place for music a place where shared listening coexists with the questioning of tradition questioning of tradition and with the typologies of doing and listening to music it is therefore important to realize we do then our poetic sound action that you will here to close our session, understood here as the cause of anything being free from being to be. Uh, thank you very much for this very interesting and very uh, hi. Sorry, Emila. Okay. Just to tell you that it's one minute and 30 seconds. Now it's the resonance. This, we did it with all this. So we started from the point in Sarajevo in May, and now we reached to this thing that we want to share with you. Marco will just do it. Sorry. Sorry, I thought you finished. Yes, yes, By we way, were, actually, are, but are... it should be, it should, the audio should be, I don't know if Marco yeah, can we, share we the audio. We are happy to hear you. However, I have to tell you, you're already five minutes oh. over your time limit. Oh. Sorry. Even though you are calling us from Buenos Aires, so you're making a big effort to wake up at I don't know when. So we are. Yeah, it's, we are it's four four uh, hours earlier. <laughs> yes. So in that case, yes, we we have one minute for the, the brief presentation. I think I am sharing audio, but uh, I, there was nothing playing. I, wait. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is there.
thank you for having a bit more time with us. Sorry about that. We are over now. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's very interesting. I mean, I wish... Yeah. Okay. Duly, duly deserved. So, first of all, we're sorry you're not here with us. It would be nice if we could uh, redo, uh, remake the conditions of the performance and see what would happen today with the same, starting with the same uh, entry elements. But what I want to say is that, uh, because I was a uh, witness how you kind of spontaneously developed this uh, project and how, how it, 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 it um, ended with, the, with an ad hoc performance um, in the space of Bosnian Cultural Sp Center. Uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm very curious, uh, actually, and, uh, or, or I'm, I, it's, it's very interesting to hear this discussion as a kind of counterweight to the actual physical experience of, the, of, the, of, 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 of music. And what I want to say is that, um, first of all, um, this imposed idea of the, this sonic materialism, you know, which we know well from, from the books by Christoph Cox, Christ Christoph, Christopher, Christoph Cox, I think, or Christopher Cox, I don't know, uh, or uh, Salome Voglin and, 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 uh, and, and several authors that have imposed this uh, necessity to abandon the, the semantic connotations of music in order for this kind of uh, ontological experience of, of sound uh, to take over in order to, let's say, free ourselves from um, or free the music from the necessity of connection to the temporary and temporal existence of human beings that are witnessing to it. So this kind of uh, ontological experience of music uh, is, 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 is relating to this eternity of possibility of music for, to exist on one hand. And on the other hand, you are uh, initiating, uh, you, you, are, you are connecting this idea of eternal ontological presence with a very specific, very short uh, uh, tempora te temporality uh, related uh, experience in time, in moment, in a place. So somehow uh, I'm curious, uh, how do you uh, reflect, I, we, I didn't catch it in the presentation, but uh, what, what is the, this connection between this kind of omnipresent, ontological temporal omnipresence and this kind of brief uh, existence in a short uh, moment of time where the work is happening. Uh, Amila, thank you very much for, for your, your, your comments about this. I, 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 actually, I, I, we still are trying to operate between us in this time of co-creation, a possibility to be synchronous and asynchronous at the same time. And I think that it is, it's even possible to get further and any movement or improvement about this, thinking about not in Kronos idea, but uh, in an ionic idea or chirotic idea. And so that is our um, settlement for, for this moment. We are really experience a time where it is possible to, between our four people, trying to get connected about all these things in the middle. So even so, if you think with us about the sound materiality of the clarinets, and suddenly we are getting lost of these signifiers or the significant or the meaning. For us, it's uh, like in the Susan Sontag situation, just not to get, well, actually to get rid of interpretations. <laughs> and and the, uh, the possibility of doing it and writing about it at the same time is for us not very exciting at this moment. So we are all engaged about this and we are still digging. Uh, this is our second layer. I think that we will have a third and a fourth and a fifth. And then probably uh, looking back, probably we will be again with uh, like Ulysses, not trying to get rid of the experience, but get really involved in one. Thank you. Uh, do, do we have any other questions from the audience, by the way? Maybe I, it was more fair that I opened the floor to the audience than to myself, but uh, anyway, okay, in that case, I just have a brief, an, an, uh, another, another question, which is something which I didn't catch also when you, because you called it the Sarajevo experiment, because it happened in Sarajevo. Uh, what is the role, I asked you about the role of the time, now what is the role of the place, and would this experiment how the sound, or what, how, 
have a different uh, outcome if it were in a different place or not? Well, it is, um, well, of course, it has it had to do with place, even if it is not connected with anything specific on the place. It actually started with the provocation of the, the sea or the ocean coming to Sarajevo. That's why in the first uh, uh, return to Ithaca, let's say, to Sarajevo, we have a kind of a sea, um, because we were trying to bring the sea from Porto to Sarajevo kind of in this um, bringing something that is ours to you, kind of offering you our sea. But in the end, after we, we started reflecting about it afterwards, and we thought it was too literal. And we were, that's why we were saying that we kind of, we feel that we fail, failed about our performance in Sarajevo. That's why we were, everything is about failure in this, in this thing that's we that's why we also bring the the this idea of uh, the failure and so we were trying to fail better so the fail connection again to and fail better <laughs> fail better as of course yes. Beckett uh, says but this idea of we just wanted Sarajevo is coming from the sense of there is no sea but we can maybe imagine one to you <laughs> so back to the Joycean terms uh, anyway, okay, thank you very much for your presentation. I'm always against tyranny of any kind, including the tyranny of meaning. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you personally, and uh, always also for the poetic sonic action, which is the poetry will save us all. Thank you. Uh, have a, a good uh, work at your other conference in Buenos Aires, which is why you didn't visit us. Uh, greetings to our colleagues in, in, in Portugal. And we move on to the second presentation by Hedy Urban, uh, which, uh, who is now uh, calling us from University of Plymouth, I think. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hi, Hedy. Hi. Hi, Amila. Can Hello, everybody. Us? Can you see us? Yes. Can you yes, hear and see good. me? Very good. This time uh, you are not uh, with us in Sarajevo. Well, last time we heard uh, about the, well, I guess the, this project in its initial stages, we heard your presentation in Sarajevo. Uh, so uh, it was four years ago. And I think that, uh, yeah, was it four years ago? Yes. And so later yeah. we went to Plymouth. And now, now it's nice that you're back with us to, to present your work. Thank you so much. Yes, my heart breaks that I can't be in Sarajevo. When I first went there and I brought my son to the conference, I absolutely fell in love with Sarajevo and uh, the symposium. So uh, unfortunately, I can't be there. I'm actually in the US right now at the moment oh. doing some research here so a few more hours behind <laughs> but uh, anyhow um, yes I'll share okay. my screen please do please start so so uh, as Amila was saying um, I, I started working with um, trying to understand how I could implement wearable technology, uh, sound and music with traditional performance practices. Um, and I, I've been doing this for a, a few years now where I've been, I started working with embedding sensors into clothing um, and creating body instruments. I've now um, created a wearable body musical body instrument device, which uh, is, is not embedded into textiles, but it's a separate device that I've developed, which um, initiates sounds uh, when movement is triggered. And part of the premise for this concept was to um, study 
the uh, two call, strong cultural performance practices um, that I have have personal connections with. I lived in Turkey for a few years. I've been to Spain several times. And I became very interested in the practice of the whirling dervishes of Turkey and Spanish Andalusian flamenco. So for years, I tried to find these connections, both musically, geographically, historically, and bring them together into a comprehensive performance piece um, using these wearable devices that I've developed. So not to get too technological about what wearable tech is, but I think most of us don't even realize that we're carrying some form of wearable tech with us every single day, whether it's a smart bracelet or, um, you know, a Bluetooth key tracker, uh, Apple uh, tag, a Wi-Fi wi tag, or, um, you know, any, any kind of device, uh, even the, even your phone is, is considered a piece of wearable tech because you're taking it with you. It's a portable um, piece of technology that, that is constantly um, near or on the body. Um, so I was looking at these different elements um, and trying to figure out how I could create something that used the body in such a way that was intuitive by creating a system that could be interactive um, to, to use as uh, a musical extension of the body. And in my research, I looked back to several uh, um, artists who are working with experimental um, music and performance, because I, I was very interested in exploring how I could create a performance from using technology and body movement. So one of the um, initial inspirations was Nam Jun Pak's um, TV cello, where Charlotte Mormon essentially plays three TV screens in a performance piece. And I thought this was interesting because this was one of the first sort of uh, performance acts where somebody was using technology to place near or close to, bod to the body and use it as a musical instrument. Of course, this didn't really play any um, actual music, but the, the TV screens would initiate sound or static. And so this was kind of an early version of a uh, piece of um, technology that, that was used as an instrument on the body. And I also looked into other artists later on who were working in this field. Um, and I came across Dee Mainstone's work, who I thought was very uh, interesting. And she created this piece called The Human Harp, where it's a vest uh, outfitted with several wire attachments that essentially clip on to other wires or uh, attachments. And so this uh, particular vest was meant to be attached to the wires of bridges. So when you attach the, the, the wires, it actually absorbs the reverberations of the actual bridge and creates a sound. Uh, and, and, and essentially you're playing the bridge. And this, this installation has been played in various, um, various bridges across the world in New York City, in, in the UK. So this is in a kind of an interesting work that um, I've been following. And also getting more into the uh, wearable tech world, the um, group Cute Circuit, they've done a lot of work with embedded technology into clothing. This particular piece of clothing is the sound shirt where several vibrate, vibration motors were embedded into this um, jacket and it was meant to be a way for people of, uh, who are hearing impaired to feel the vibrations of a, a music, uh, musical piece such as a symphony or any, any kind of music really. 
So it's a different way of experiencing music. And even in my work, in my designs, it's been very important for me to implement that feeling of the reverberation of, of an actual instrument on the body so you can feel and understand that tactile cue. Uh, much like when you're playing a guitar, you can feel the, uh, the vibrations of that instrument closer to the body and you get that sense that, that you're not only playing the instrument, you can hear the sound or the music, but you can feel that vibration as well. Another example of this, uh, Joseph Malloch's um, prosthetic body instruments. These are also examples of using the body to create sound with. And these pieces were used in dance performances. They would trigger sound based on certain uh, shapes that were created by the performers. So I thought that this was a very interesting work as well. And another um, inspiration that I look to often was uh, Imogen Heap's Mimu gloves. Although there were limitations on these gloves, um, now they are they are at the forefront of of technology in terms of making music with the body. And what they are essentially is gloves that are outfitted with several sensors and actuators that when uh, the, the, the hands are moved in certain positions, they can change the pitch or turn up the volume or initiate certain um, sounds or, or gestures if it's a drum beat or if it's a guitar. Um, and it, it all comes with its own um, built-in software. So uh, very interesting work being done by the Mimi Gloves. So with all of this uh, research, I started to explore my own direction in how I wanted to implement a wearable tech body instrument. And as I mentioned earlier, I became really inspired by this performance of the Whirling Dervishes of Turkey in uh, Spanish flamenco. And I wanted to create a performance piece or a composition where the two performers were put together in a space and following a narrative and choreo choreography that I created and using these devices, they would exchange sounds and dance to the music that I composed as well as under the backdrop of a beautiful film that was created by filmmaker Kaz Rahman. And uh, the intention was to, um, perform this piece uh, in, in several different venues, which I'll get into just a little bit later. So as I mentioned, this inspiration of the practice of the dervishes, essentially I have been very careful about respecting the traditions of the dervishes as well as flamenco dance. And when I approached uh, traditionally practicing dervishes to see if they would be interested in trying my devices to see how I could capture their movements with sound with these devices. Um, many of them kind of turned away from me because they did not want to obscure their tradition of the Sema, which is the word for the sacred ritual that the Mevlavi order practice, um, which is still being practiced today in many parts of Turkey and also globally. So I, I had some difficulty finding um, performing dervishes who would actually want to try this new technology. And as I said, I, I didn't want to take away from the essence of the origins of the performance. I wanted to augment certain specific movements that the dervishes do, especially the continuous, beautiful, mesmerizing rotation and capture that with sound. Um, and I then I realized after looking at social media that there's actually many people who are doing this. They are they are they call themselves turners or whirlers. Um, but I came across somebody who is actually a dervish and a performance artist as well. So I began to work with him. Um, and another uh, 
part of the exploration was looking into the history of flamenco dance and looking at these links both historically, geographically, musically. There are so many um, overlaps in culture that I found from the migration of the Romas from um, all the way from India through Turkey through southern Spain. And I realized that that there were so many connections that I could make through music and movement as well. So essentially what I did was I, I created this piece and alongside that with the devices that I've developed, I wanted to track specific movements of the performers. So for the dervish, I had, I've, I've been testing and putting um, so I have four devices and I and each performer has two devices, one on the wrist and one on the foot, because I'm looking at capturing the movements of the feet and also of the wrist or the arm. So uh, both the dervish and the flamenco dancer have two devices. This is the device, it's called the sound drop. It's an experimental musical device that works by using a touch sensor in the center of a circular LED ring to turn it on and off and reacts to the user's movements and gestures. Essentially what it is, is I've created a library of sounds. Um, the first library is using traditional Turkish instruments that I've manipulated with kind of electronic sounds. Um, and the same with traditional Spanish uh, guitar sounds or castanet sounds. And each one of these devices is programmed to play one sound at a time. So when the performer turns it on, it as the faster that they move, the louder the sound of the, the device becomes. And uh, it also lights up to show that the device is on. And basically I'm, I'm tracking the speed of the movement of the performer. And every time the, the sound becomes louder, um, it's, it's because the performer is triggering that sound with their movement. So I hope you can hear this. This is um, one of the sound drops that I programmed with the castanet sound. I hope you can hear this. Uh, were you able to hear that? I don't know. No. No. I don't know how to fix the sound with that. Let me try. Okay. Did you do the share sound, computer sound? Because if you're sharing from the presentation, it's not, but if you reshare and just keep yeah. on the share computer sound should be better. Okay, I am not able to choose that option. Uh, I'm not able to choose that option to share the sound? After you click on share, and mm -hmm. the little windows of Zoom sharing uh, applications appear, that's where you could, yeah. Mm, yes. Go back to Zoom, back to Zoom. Okay. And then no. in Zoom, uh, click on, uh, b before you choose the, the application, in the lower left corner should be a chance to share the computer sound. I know, I see it there, but it, it, it's Unclear. blocked. Okay. Let, let me try to do this. Um, no, it will not allow me to share my sound. I don't know why. That's a shame. Um, my That's colleagues who are teachers and we're all struggling with Zooms and presentations, they say maybe you can switch off your presentation altogether and then relaunch the presentation and then relaunch Zoom, yeah? The relaunch the sharing. 
Okay, so you want me to restart the sharing? Yes. Yeah, okay, so I've done that. No, it doesn't give me the option. Okay, it doesn't matter now. We will. Okay, never mind. Uh, let me just go back to it. Anyhow, um, well, <laughs> the device makes a uh, sound of digital castanets. Uh, so unfortunately, you can't hear it. But uh, anyhow, um, so we could along. hear it. It was just not very loud. Maybe we go back and, and maybe if you oh, can turn okay. up just for a second. We could hear it. It was. It's. It's not loud, but we could hear it. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, right. So basically, um, what what I'm looking at in terms of gestures that I'm tracking are arm movements. Obviously, a flamenco dancer uses a lot of footwork, which is essential to a flamenco performance. And similarly. Um, I found that even a dervish rotates in a similar way to how a flamenco dancer also dances. So I wanted to capture that movement of, of rotation for both dancers or, or the sound of when certain specific moments happen, like a stomping of the foot or a whirling of the hand. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so essentially these are some of the movements that I've been looking at. The other thing that we did was, um, so we've now showcased this performance in the UK, in Canada, and we are premiering it in Dubai next week, which is why I can't be in Sarajevo. Um, but I hope I can bring this show to Sarajevo because it would be amazing. Um, and uh, each time, each venue has been very different. So we, um, the first performance was under a massive 360 dome. So we did a 360 film and the performers were in the circular space and I wanted to choreograph around this amazing, huge circular space to emphasize how these two uh, performers could come together. So here's a little clip of that performance. I hope you can hear it. <laughs> And this is the most recent one that we did in Canada and the venue was again different. Uh, the flamenco dancer was also different. We used a, another dancer here and we tried to again choreograph the space with the performers. So here we're projecting the film as a circle both on the stage floor and uh, as a back projection. So they were both using the circular space. And also, I should mention that as they are performing, they are each using their devices, but also sharing the sound with each other. So it's like this layer of sound that's on top of the existing musical composition. So every time they would move or initiate sound, it would be like as if they were communicating with each other. <laughs> Another, um, just quickly, uh, I'll show you a little uh, experiment that I was doing with trying to visualize these movements um, in a way that you could, the audience could also understand that not only is there sound coming out of these devices, but also there's a visual component. So uh, I was in Istanbul back in July um, practicing with my uh, 
performer, Dervish, who will be performing in Dubai. And mm -hmm. we did a little test um, visualing his movement, visualizing his movements with the devices. So this is how that looks. And it's, and it's probably something in the future that I'm developing to see how I can do this on stage where the, the devices are not just creating sound, but you can also see and, and understand the movement of the performer. So again, essentially, as the faster he moves his devices, the larger the circles come, but you can actually see the patterns that they're creating. And this is the dervish who will be performing in Dubai next week and a, a test that we did to see how he could use the devices and how, how the whole thing kind of comes together. We're not getting any audio. No audio. Anyway, we will have to wrap up this session because we're already. Uh, yes. So, uh, so it, just just yeah. at the end, um, the goal of this work is to highlight specific aspects of certain traditional performance practices with sound and music to augment the experience of the dancer and the audience and to discover the potential of exploring immersive and interactive environments. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shari. Thank this, you. Uh, the Sorry about the, the audio. The, the, yeah, the, the proposed, uh, the, I mean, uh, overall, your research is very interesting. And to be honest, uh, the technological aspect is one uh, e e aspect which you have, uh, I would say, uh, explained to us quite thoroughly, I would be curious to learn more now about the use of it in the, for example, in the forthcoming piece, so how the, uh, the whole sonic um, layer of this piece is uh, uh, constructed. But unfortunately, we will not have time to do that, so uh, because we are way over the, the schedule, now we are a bit almost 10 minutes into the, after the, the, the time limit of this presentation, so I have a question if some of our uh, audiences do have some urgent uh, things to ask to Hedy, or uh, we can leave this for another occasion to discuss this work hopefully once when you come and bring us your work uh, to Sarajevo, or that on other great. occasions when we can discuss other, and, and uh, how, how should I say, the, 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 the structural and uh, stylistic, let's say, repercussions of use of this, uh, th these devices in, in the works that you are making. So thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very Join much. us in our next symposium and visit us even sooner. Uh, with Hedy's so presentation, we are uh, finishing the morning sessions for the, uh, of the 13th International Symposium Music in Society. Uh, at 2.30, we will have a guided tour through the Museum of, uh, National Museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina and visit to the exhibition on Sevdalinka by the curator of this exhibition, Nirha Fendic. And at 3.30, we will start with our uh, working sessions at the National Museum. Uh, the visit to the museum will not be streamed, so uh, we ask our online audience to join us at 3.30. And at 7 p.m. Uh, in this same space of the National Museum, uh, our uh, ethno-academic ensemble, uh, uh, traditional music ensemble of the Academy of Music of the University of Sarajevo, will uh, have a short concert presenting the uh, traditional music of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Stay with us. Thank you.